Hey guys, Jay from Real Street Performance. I'm here with the Valley Fever Streamliner today. We're doing some upgrades here in the shop in the attempt to break the 400 mile per hour mark. So we have two exciting upgrades that are going on the car. The first of which would be twin precision 6466s. The car had twins on it before, but they were a beta brand. And instead of doing product testing on an event that only happens at best twice a year, I just wanted to switch to a product that I knew I could have a reliable outcome and a ton of performance. So we've got two 6466 turbos going on in the car. And then we're gonna go to a Liberty five-speed transmission. So before it had a TH400, which is just a three-speed trans. Now we're gonna have five forward gears, and that's gonna offer us better gear drops, keeping the engine speed higher as it goes down course, which will help the engine live longer. With the TH400, when you move the gear shifter from second gear into third gear, there was a big drop. The engine speed went down to say 6,000 RPM, and the engine is then heavily loaded as it tries to accelerate the car down course. With the five speed, we're gonna have tighter ratios. So instead of having these big exaggerated gear drops between gears, keep the engine speed up higher, which will help the engine live better and help us make that run at 400 miles per hour. So the transmission that's going in the car now is a Liberty Equalizer. And if you don't know what an Equalizer is, it's arguably the baddest manual transmission on the planet. Most manual transmissions have a single counter shaft. So you have a main shaft and a counter shaft and as torque and horsepower are applied, it wants to spread those two apart and that's what causes gear failure. So you lose tooth engagement, stress is put on the gears in an unnatural manner and then you have a gear breakage. The equalizer has two counter shafts. So it is kind of a lay down transmission and it has two counter shafts supporting that main shaft, making it unbelievably tough. So if you look at things like pro stock, pro mod, uh, a lot of land speed guys. This particular transmission came from the Speed Demon team. They now have a seven speed trans and we're gonna use their five speed trans. So the five speed over the three speed, these are big jumps and we're gonna have a much more reliable, easier to accelerate program. So when the car had the TH400 in it, we were using a torque converter. Now that we have the Liberty Equalizer, we're gonna be using a clutch. So we have a Clutch Masters triple disc clutch. We do have to use a bell housing that bolts to a Chevy style footprint. So we're gonna use a ATF adapter plate to go from our Toyota engine to a Chevy bell housing. And then we're gonna to have to do some custom work to get a release bearing or a clutch hydraulic release bearing into that bell housing in order to actuate the clutch. Along with that, we'll have to add a clutch pedal to the car. And again, the clutch will only be used to get the car off the starting line. So we'll leave the starting line, clutch in. Once the push truck gets me up to speed, I can let off the clutch and then I'll just be shifting the transmission with an air shifter operated by a button on the steering wheel. So if you've been to a racetrack and you've heard a really fast manual trans go down the track, chances are it's a Liberty Equalizer. They generally use a vertigate shifter, which the driver will pull up on a ring, push the shifter forward, and then from there, it's just rowing the shifter back and forth in a straight line. It's called a vertigate, and that just shifts the transmission without using the clutch. Very fast, very smooth operation. Because of the layout of the streamliner, we can't use a shifter, so it's gonna be an air shifted design. So there's gonna be a solenoid pack mounted to the trans that's gonna actuate the shift lugs, and I'll just be changing gears with a button on the steering wheel. So as I mentioned before, this is gonna give us a significant advantage in keeping the engine alive and keeping the car accelerating.
paint a picture of what we were doing before, again, it was not easy on the engine. Going into high gear, having the engine down at 6,000 RPM, having a ton of boost pouring into it, it's just hard on parts. That's what's gonna cause the engine to fail. So we're gonna be able to maximize the performance of the engine and the longevity of the engine by changing how much RPM the engine is faced when it makes a gear change. So as far as turbo selection, these are gonna be V-band 0.826466. It's a lot of turbocharger. You know, if you have a 2JZ with a 6466, you have 900 plus wheel horsepower capacity, and we're gonna use two of them. Doesn't mean we're trying to make 1800 horsepower. We're trying to make 12 to 1400 horsepower, but do it at a low pressure ratio. So that big turbine wheel, that 66 millimeter turbine wheel, I've got two of those flowing a lot of gas, which should keep the back pressure down low enough that we can exhaust as much heat out of the engine as possible, keeping the temperatures in the engine mitigated the best we can. Again, I'll say it a million times, every time we talk about land speed racing, it's a long time under boost. All you really need to worry about, first and foremost, is mitigating those engine temperatures, because as soon as the temperatures run away, you're gonna have a part failure and your week is gonna be over. Because these turbochargers have a different footprint as far as where the turbine housing interacts with the down pipes, the up pipes, and how the charge pipes interact with the turbocharger's cover, a lot of the turbo system has to get remade. Fortunately for us, we have access to Jim Braun, excellent fabricator, he's been a friend of mine for a long time, and he's gonna come in and handle all the fabrication work needed because that's not really my job. Another thing that we're gonna do to the car while it's here that we'll feature in another video is quality speed sensor input. So the Motec has excellent traction control, but it needs quality speed inputs in order to use that information to follow its slip aim or the prescribed amount of wheel slip. So in order to do that, we need to make sure we're feeding the ECU quality data. What we had on the car before was a little bit choppy. So both the front wheel speed and rear wheel speed, we're gonna have to fabricate and adapt quality sensors and make sure that we have a quality tooth pattern in order to get good data into the Motec so we can have a safe traction control system. One of the major liabilities in racing a car like this at high speeds is a tire failure. So Streamliners is a long car, it doesn't turn good. If you lose a tire and the car makes a turn, chances are it's gonna pencil roll. And if it pencil rolls, the driver's gonna be in big trouble. So traction control is cool. I like it, I like using it. In this case, it's gonna be a necessary thing. So we have a safe car that me or anyone else can get in the car and get back out of the car having a good experience.
I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Lots of neat content to come. Hopefully we're able to achieve our goal this year and break that 400 mile per hour mark. Stay tuned as we get this thing back together and get it to the salt.